Ultimately, patriarchy is a calling. Patriarchy is a solution to the things that early man faced. It was the answer to the challenges brought by his world and the predators that he had to defend against. And in patriarchy, is primarily interested in the family structure as a base unit because it is the smallest form of governance you can have, two individuals that have interests beyond themselves. You can self-govern, but your interests are singular, primarily. When you have a relationship, you have your needs, you have their needs, and you have the relationship's needs. And you need to be able to manage and maintain all that. The fabulous thing about all this is we know that it's also masculine in nature. These are not feminine traits. The ability to survive, protect, and to provide are inherently masculine. These are our roles. The fabulous thing is we have 10,000 years of human combined collective experience to show that this method works across time, across continents, across cultures. No other form of family structuring works better than this. This isn't an academic exercise. This isn't a sexual political theory. These are proven tried and true over time and have been successful. If we want society and civilization to survive, we need to make sure we have a culture that functions. And to have a culture that functions, we need to have a society that nourishes. For society to nourish, we need a family structure that endures, relationship structures that endures. And all that is predicated upon individuals who are thriving. If you don't have those, everything beyond it's going to collapse. Society, culture, civilization, all of it's at risk. Today, sexual politics is diametrically opposed to that. It is diametrically opposed to success and the historical proven record of success. And it is not measuring the results. It's not taking into account that feminism is more dangerous to women. Feminisms and the results of it are do detrimental harm to children. It's diametrically opposed to this. And we should fight it vehemently. It's, I, I'm kind of often challenged with the idea of how do you then kind of approach patriarchy? How, how do you kind of explain some of the other merits and benefits uh, and try to persuade the other sex and say, what do you tell your mother who doesn't understand? What do you tell a spouse that doesn't understand? And I simply ask, what has feminism done for you today? Show me honest results that feminism owned, created, and developed on its own that's benefiting you in a significant, meaningful way. Then honestly compare that to alternative systems. I'm not saying that there aren't, isn't room for improvement. There really is. But let's be honest about it. Let's measure those results. Let's have an honest discussion, pro and con, and work at this. But this does work. And if it's working, don't torch it on the ground because you want to get rid of the weeds. It's foolish. It's insane. It's irrational. Oh, and by the way, those behaviors didn't get us here.
The next step I would like to talk about <clears throat> is it's a, it's a multi-part, primarily two parts. And it's a call to fathership. Uh, it's essentially the first five years are the most critical. We know that the children that have the brightest and most potential prospects in life are those that are most thoroughly parented. I don't think that's a startling statement, but it would surprise some. Based on that, we should be looking at those first five years as being terribly critical elements to our child's success, to our family's success, and to our personal legacy. In the first five years, your child's brain will be 90% developed. Personality, brain development. We should be taking particular care to note, to handle that, be prepared for those results, and do so appropriately. When we talk about a child's needs, we talk about in the first 18 months, you're an infant. And the importance of stabilizing a personality during that time frame. You are completely dependent upon the care to feed, shelter, protect, and, and provide affection during these years. Right? 18 months. The most important thing you could do during this time period is no harm. You want to fuck up your child and your legacy? Hit them. Hit them now. Hit them hard. The hand you wield does not just hit flesh. It literally hits not only the child's psyche that's going to resonate for the rest of their lives, you are imprinting your hand upon the face of their brain. The human brain will not wire itself properly if it is abused or traumatized here. You want to know what a psycho comes from externally? Here. Narcissists, sociopaths, all here. I'm not saying sometimes there's a genetic component, the external ones, this is where it comes from. And by the way, I'm talking to you guys. Are you guys really the offender? You know who really is the offender? If you want to protect your family, protect your child against an abusive mother. How's that one? The most empathetic sex abuses children between zero and 18 months of age. A child that cannot talk, cannot walk, is completely dependent upon you and the mother for support it needs. And their solution, when tried, when stressed, is a resort to violence. And don't be misguided by the good meaning grandmother who says, well, that's sometimes they just need discipline. Sometimes they just need to shut up and behave. Totally cool with that, Grandma. Because I'm going to treat you the same way. Because sometimes, woman, you just need to shut up and do as you're told. I can guarantee you, bring that shit up, and you will have adversely affected your relationship with her. Grandma does not want to be hit, understandably so. But it's cool to hit a toddler, an infant. She's okay with that. I wouldn't be. Do no harm. Do what you can to make sure you're prepared, whatever that is, that violence isn't the resort you, you drop down to. Prepare yourself, train yourself, use other tools, abilities. Make sure that your spouse isn't overloaded, the primary caregiver isn't overloaded because you're gonna do irreparable harm. Second phase is when you're a toddler from about 18 months to about five years. And here is a remarkable growth period. They're starting to move, they're starting to talk, communicate, socialize, and provide self-care. And it's our job to make sure that happens appropriately. Uh, Ken Curry, uh, yesterday during his workshop with Dr. Sean Smith, was literally talking about how do you develop confidence in, in an adult? How do you develop confidence with a child? A strong, stable personality and independent identity 
combined with capability develops confidence. This is what we're trying to foster here with child development, those preschool years. All right, your job is to make sure that happens, right? And there's a number of ways in which we do it.